The Cove Island Light, at Gig Point on the island, is located in Fathom 5 National Marine Park, but is not part of the park. It is situated on the Bruce Peninsula, Ontario, Canada. It has been a navigational aid in the narrow channel between Lake Huron and Georgian Bay since 30 October 1858. It was the first of six stone imperial towers to be completed, all were illuminated by 1859. Most other lighthouses of the era were built of brick, wood, iron or concrete, the six were built at a time when commercial shipping traffic was increasing on the Great Lakes between Canada and the U.S. because of new trade agreements and the opening of the Sault Ste. Marie Canal locks in 1855. The settlement of the Bruce Peninsula was also well underway by then, making the lighthouses even more useful. They acted as navigational aids for the boats and ships on Lake Huron and Georgian Bay. All are currently operating as automated lights. The tower, Cove Island, Ontario, was formally registered on the Canadian Register of Historic Places on the 14th of November 2014. The federal government restored the site in 2015–2016. History The origin of the imperial designation is not certain, but some historians speculate that because the towers were public construction built under the colonial administration while Canada was a self-governing colony of Britain, the name would assure at least some funding from the British Empire's Board of Trade. All six imperial towers, along with a limestone lightkeeper's dwelling, were constructed by John Brown builder from Thorold, Ontario, a contractor and stonemason. The design aspects of the tower are virtually identical to those of the Point Clark Lighthouse, well described in a Government of Canada document. The lamp itself underwent several transformations, starting with an argand lamp fueled with sperm whale oil, then a flat wick coal oil lamp, replaced with an oil vapor light about 1900. Vaporized kerosene was burned to keep the beacon aglow. An on-site generator provided electricity during the 1950s and in 1971, an underwater power cable was laid from Tobermory to the island. The powerful, second order Fresnel lens was manufactured by the Louis Sewer Company in Paris and installed by workmen from France inside the polygonal lantern with its three rows of rectangular glass panes. Similar in style to the other Imperial Towers lighthouses on Chantry Island, at Point Clark and on Griffith Island, the Cove Island Lighthouse has five sets of stairs with 15 steps each, one set with 11 steps and the final curved iron stairway to the lamp room has nine steps total, 95 steps. An iron door leads into the lamp room. The stone lightkeeper's cottage adjacent to the tower was built at the same time. The new lightkeeper's house was built in 1970 a short distance from the tower. This light station was continuously manned from 1858 to 1991, making it the longest keeper-occupied light in Ontario. The lighthouse tower, the original house and fog plant, a workshop, the assistant keeper's house and the modern lightkeeper's house make up the light station today. The light is currently a valuable aid to navigation operated by the Canadian Coast Guard, it is the only imperial tower that is still using the original Fresnel lens. Although the facility has been renovated, access to the island is restricted so tours are not available. Views from the ferry or a private boat are excellent. Lightkeepers George F. Collins was the first person to serve as lightkeeper at the Isle of Coves. Born in England, in 1817, George Collins went to sea at the young age of 12 where he travelled the world becoming a captain by his early twenties. 
In 1851, Collins immigrated to Canada to live in Kingston before moving to Collingwood in 1855, when the Imperial Towers were being built. Applications for positions as light keepers came in from all over the country. With his maritime experience, George Collins applied for the Nottawasaga Island Light near his home at Collingwood. Surprisingly, he was instead appointed keeper at the Isle of Coves. Collins' salary was $435 per year. Like the keeper at Point Clark, Collins was required to clean and whitewash the tower as required, to fuel the light and, twice a day, to wind up the clockwork like mechanism, with weights and pulleys, that enabled the weights to rotate the lens. David McBeath, on the other hand, applied for the light keeper's position at Isle of Coves, and was initially given the job at Nottawasaga instead. Eventually, in 1860, the two were able to switch jobs. David McBeath (1860–1872) of all the fascinating stories the Isle of Coves Light Station has to tell, nothing compares with the drama of David McBeath and his family running out of food with the lake already freezing. Provisions finally arrived on a steamship before they starved. William McBeath (1872–1876), Bryce Miller (1876–1878), George Curry (1878–1902) is remembered for his part in the aftermath of the sinking of the schooner Regina off Gat Point, Cove Island, on the 10th of September 1866. The ship sank and the captain, Amos Tripp, a «mysterious character», according to some reports drowned during the storm. His body was found on Cove Island by George Curry. The body was returned to the family two weeks later, William Collier 1902 Kenneth MacLeod William Simpson, 1912 to 1915. Jack Leslie, 1915 to 1945. Harold Hal Banners, 1945-1946, lived on the island with his wife Iris and his brother, assistant keeper Earl Banners. Hal and Iris had married in a ceremony on the island, Russell Botham, 1947–1948 William Bill Spears knew that his work must continue, transmitting information to Wyatton in addition to operating the light. Even when he was seriously ill with mumps in 1954, he had to continue radio reports while spending long days between the generator engines. Robert Bob Nelder, 1977 to 1981. Jack Vaughan was the last light keeper at Cove Island, 1982 to 1991. Because of automation, his role was virtually one of caretaker, particularly in the last few years. See also List of lighthouses in Ontario List of lighthouses in Canada Great Lakes Storm of 1913 Category – Lighthouses on the Canadian Register of Historic Places